Hello again, Daniel Ritchie, developer of Howler 9.1, and I'd like to show you a few more things that are coming in this new version in the next few weeks. Um, I'd like to start with the Batch Browser, uh, which has um, been given a few bug uh, fixes, as well as a new look. It's a little bit of a cleaner, simpler look, uh, I think, that goes with the new program. Uh, but more importantly, uh, the, previously the program was not able to see file extensions if they had all capital letters, I believe, and that's been fixed. Um, if you're not familiar with it, the Batch Browser is a, sort of a browser similar to what you would get in uh, inside of Windows where you view your files. Uh, but the difference is uh, you can also do uh, jobs from here, uh, such as batch renaming, conversion, uh, deleting, and some other things like that, as well as getting information about your files. Uh, you can also do traditional uh, browser tasks such as uh, uh, stacking them side by side and, and copying files back and forth. Uh, but I'll just show you briefly while I'm here uh, how, how the program or how the browser works. You just simply select the files you want to copy or, excuse me, that you want to uh, rename or that you want to convert. Um, and then you uh, go over to here under jobs, you collect batch rename and you see the files listed that you, uh, you selected. You select some new parameters for the new name you want. You can uh, either change an existing name or make a new name based on uh, a date or uh, some some uh, pattern that you enter. You can enter uh, frame numbers with any number of digits and uh, that sort of thing. Um, also inside the program you can do batch conversion which is very convenient. Say I have four files or two files. I'll just do say these three here maybe. Hit batch convert. Say I wanted to convert them to uh, all all uh, BMPs. I just hit convert, and that would do the job. Or alternately, I can convert them to and move them to a new folder by specifying that uh, parameter there. Um, and basically, that's the batch browser. It lets you visually do some jobs that you would have to do through just uh, lists of uh, file names uh, previously um, or in other programs. But it's just more of a visual way of doing it. Uh, lots of controls, lots of options for changing file names, uh, and that sort of thing is very quick and easy to use. Uh, so we're we're happy to make some bug fixes and changes in the back batch browser. Um, another change that's coming in uh, Howler 9.1 is uh, under the uh, print uh, option. Here is there are some new options you can. Uh, of course, use the existing print panel. We've never claimed really to be the world's greatest printing program. We're really just a paint program, and we we, uh, we have not concentrated terribly hard on uh, printing. We do realize we could use some uh, improvements in that, uh, that area, and we plan to do so eventually, uh, possibly not for this version. But we have added some options that will make it easier to work with, nonetheless. Uh, one is the... Uh, printing with the associated print program basically whatever program you've associated uh, with uh, print jobs will be brought up with the existing image and in, in this case it's uh, looks like the Microsoft uh, default uh, printing program which is actually pretty good I have to admit it'll do all the basics and also let you create some uh, some various options such as uh, wallet size and <laughs> things like that um, you, you can fit to a picture, make a number of copies, and pretty much anything you'd really want to do, uh, unless you're doing really high-level professional work. Also, there is a uh, associated image viewer. Uh, whichever image viewer you have associated with uh, a BMP file will receive a copy of this, and you can go from there. Uh, it's just a sort of a shortcut of uh, instead of having to load it into another program. In this case, I have Irfan View, which is a, a, an incredibly popular image viewer. Uh, it is also free. It's very powerful. Um, I don't think you'll find a professional out there who doesn't have it probably installed on their machine somewhere. Uh, and you probably use it every day. Uh, it does have a fairly comprehensive set of print features. You can uh, change the portrait and landscape, rotate, and best fit to the page. And a lot of stuff I've never even looked at. A uh, number of copies and really uh, quite a few options for printing. And um, again, Earth and View 
uh, Google it and you'll find it uh, real easy. Uh, very popular download for viewing uh, various types of image files. Um, but I would also like to cover while I'm talking to you uh, one other feature that I did not cover in my previous vid video, which was um, the new, let's see, the new fill settings panel. Let me clear the monkey. I'm sure you've been only watching the monkey and not listening to what I'm talking to, talking about. But uh, we do have a new, uh, it's hard to take your eyes off that monkey. Anyways, we do have a new uh, fill settings panel. I just felt that the uh, the old version has been with us a long time and it looked kind of archaic something that was just maybe a little too Amiga uh, a little too old-fashioned <laughs> and needed to be updated but um, we didn't just want to move buttons around we also wanted to improve the functionality of it um, so sticking with our uh, our uh, our theme of uh, improving uh, interactivity and uh, what you see is what you get we've added a, a thumbnail preview of your fill settings and uh, we've also given it a layout that's more consistent with our other tools which is a little more vertical and uh, we've used a, a, a larger text where you can see uh, we can read it a little more clearly and uh, that sort of thing so I'll just uh, use a fill uh, fill tool over here of some sort as you can see, that's just our basic plain color. Um, if you select the color over there, it is, uh, uh, you can see it, the changes take place in real time on the field settings plan and panel. Um, if you select the pattern, uh, in fact, let me close that. There is one other th change I would like to show you. If you select a pattern well let me free this brush so I can show you this feature Just free this pattern let's see under brush free right here now previously if you clicked on one of these buttons it would bring up a uh, a modal dialog error panel and you'd have to click OK to get rid of it if you did not have a, a brush or a pattern loaded there uh, and that was kind of annoying so we knew we now have a new uh, non modal error panel it doesn't get in your way, but it does still give you some information. It says, uh, let me do that again. It says, no custom brush. The pattern is defined by a custom brush. It just gives you, tells you what happened without uh, forcing you to say, um, click OK. It's just a, a one one more way that we were, were trying to uh, speed up the interface um, and, and make it less annoying to users. Um, you still get the information, but it doesn't really bother you about it. It's not mission critical that you click on OK. Um, that was just a little error message that came up if you did not have a pattern selected. Uh, it wasn't really worth stopping the user uh, in his tracks to tell him that. Uh, so I'm going to select the pattern, this nice one here. And as you can see, there's a preview up at the top of what your pattern is going to look like. Um, say I had uh, changed the opacity, you would see that. Uh, reflected in that thumbnail or if I had changed this uh, this dither that gives a little bit of random noise you'd see that reflected as well um, also if I had selected a mode like multiply mode you would now see that reflected up there um, more importantly it'll show you uh, uh, that's the pattern fill but there's also these warp modes it'll give you an idea of what these warp modes are doing uh, how they're filling a shape as you can see, that's uh, fill horizontal, and that's fill vertical. It's just a sort of a slightly different way of filling the uh, the shape uh, that makes it warps that pattern into the shape. Uh, I'll draw a brush over here, and you can see that. And I'll draw one with that warp or excuse me, the warp horizontal. And you can see that is just slightly different. And it gives you a preview before you commit to anything of. Uh, what you're going to be drawing same with the gradients i'll select these gradients down here let me get a little more interesting uh... oh this is another thing that's changed i'll have to talk about that as well um, but as you can see that's just a straight gradient going from one side to the other but we can warp warp that into that shape it will actually whoops wrong <laughs> wrong one again actually 
conform to the shape and it gets really interesting if you're using a custom shape I'll draw something here and it can get really interesting when you use these custom shapes hit fill selection and uh, as you can see that that conforms to the shape that you just drew um, if I had drawn a shape that was more like this it might be better to use a different uh, warp uh, vertical instead of warp horizontal it would probably feel that a little bit better so as you can see uh, that preview really helps you see what you're gonna get uh, before you commit to it um, and that is the fill settings panel um, a few other little things I'd like to show you while I'm here and I'm just about ready to sign out but one little change we've made is in uh, this gradient panel uh, now opens much quicker it was uh, it would bring up an hourglass before as it loaded all these little thumbnail images and that has been uh, uh, at least seemingly sped up quite a bit um, and uh, once once this panel's closed it stays so next time you bring it up it will uh, it'll come up much quicker it stays uh, it stays resonant uh, where previously it was unloaded and it had to be loaded again and uh, even that initial loading is a much quicker and uh, same with uh, lens flares on the this uh, effects tool uh, it loads up much quicker you don't see that hourglass very long at all anymore and uh, that was just some little small details I mean it does in the in the grand scheme of things it's not that big a detail but um, it, it, it doesn't stop you in your tracks <laughs> and it doesn't uh, well in the old days I'll put it this way in the old days when I was an animator uh, when I was in into 2d animation uh, they would say uh, don't sharpen pencils they'd say just get a stack of pencils that are already sharp because you don't want to stop and think about a pencil while you're while you're in the zone while you're while you're animating while you while you're in the uh, the moment you know what I'm saying uh, you don't want to stop and think about the pencil or you don't want to stop and think about the interface you want to you want to think about your picture you want to think about your your creativity and, you, and your uh, your muse or whatever so it's just getting rid of these these little annoyances really helps you stay focused on your work uh, instead of um, on the quirks of the interface um, and uh, speaking of gradients we did uh, make one more bug fix here under uh, the gradients some of these uh, files were originally saved in the net framework version of our gradient editor which was later ported to uh, to be internalized and it left a small incompatibility uh, so we've gone through all these files and resaved them under the the newer gradient editor um, and it's just it, it would sometimes manifest in a uh, a small uh, you could a noticeable there'd be like one one pixel of color of the wrong color in there sometimes or maybe two and uh, that has all been sorted out now and you won't see that anymore uh, just some of the small things we're doing again uh, and uh, I'm gonna wrap up again but I, I thank you for listening and uh, howler 9 was coming in the next few weeks in December probably hope to hear from you we love feedback from our users we'd love to hear what you're doing with the program um, if you've not uh, if you're not a user you can uh, always purchase howler 9 on uh, the best 3d.com or uh, com or on my personal website at uh, squirreldome.com and uh, thanks for watching again and talk to you later Thank you.